Welcome to the Men's to Win It podcast. I'm Jason Gilbo, Jake Gilbo 11, flying solo on this Friday afternoon here, taking a look at tonight's NBA eight game slate. Looking like a decent one, a lot of high scoring uh, games to really break down, and um, pretty much everyone's over 210 as far as no over under goes outside of Cleveland, Orlando. They might as well be sitting at 209.5. Um, you're looking at projected scores here, and it's no one's projected to score under 100, um, which is pretty crazy um so you're looking at kind of all the teams in play as far as different formats go um obviously the top options go up top here we're looking at projected points of 117 for houston okc and golden state there um also looking at detroit 112 portland 109 cleveland 109 the lakers 109 um just a lot of attractive options i think your far less attractive options go to philly orlando Boston, but even them are at play at 104, 101, and 100, uh, especially Philly if you're trying to bank on that game staying close because that is the biggest spread of the night, uh, sitting at 16 points. Orlando Cleveland sitting at 9, Dallas Golden State sitting at 9, Minnesota Houston 8.5, so those are looking solid. Really, the OKC game kind of limits just because of the blowout. It's it's a likely blowout. I mean, I will bet my savings that that game uh, does not stay close. So, um, Kind of limiting those options there. So, uh, moving into the point guards, looking at all those top options tonight, it's a pretty deep slate of point guard. It kind of has been a lot this season, um, but tonight especially. I mean, if you're looking Westbrook up top, Durant didn't play that first game, so obviously that 21, 17, 11 monster that he put up was without Durant in the first meeting. Um, obviously, that matchup's in play, but I'm looking at Curry more tonight over Westbrook just due to the possibility that game staying closer. Uh, they've been averaging just about the same over the last six games there. And and that's, you know, with Curry when he doesn't even play the fourth quarter half the time. So if he can play the fourth, uh, if you can get up into that 36, 35-minute range, get a few extra minutes out of him, um, he'll be really solid against Dallas tonight, who just not a great, not a great defense defensively. So um, I'm really just looking at him. I think he's worth the shot in GPPs. I'll probably pay him down a little bit uh, in tournaments. But um, Dallas 20th and uh, – defensive efficiency against point guards this season. So uh, I'll definitely look for Curry tonight as well. Damian Lillard, he's another guy um, sitting right around 9,200 there on DK. I uh, like him a lot. Uh, averaging 28, 3, and 5 over the last 10 games. Obviously a couple down games. Um, due, to, due, to, due to some blowouts, some tough matchups, but still averaging 40 points in that span, uh, 40 fantasy points or more in that span. Uh, I'm definitely looking for him to bounce back in New Orleans. This game should be a lot closer. They have a lot of the ninth most fantasy points per game to opposing point guards. Um, I mean, Lillard are two games against him. He's averaged 25, 4, and 7. I just expect more of the same there tonight. Uh, dropping down a little bit, you can look at Kyrie Irving as a GPP play. Not really targeting him that much just to do some cheaper options. Um, it's a nice matchup for him going up against Orlando. They struggled against point guards, but... Uh, James is back. The usage isn't, and shots aren't quite going to be the same as they were the last game against Dallas. So uh, just not really on my radar. Look at another guy, Drew Holiday. He's really entered GPP territory for, for me now. Just to come out with three down games and three games that he really should have had solid performances against, especially that Sacramento game, which is disappointing. Um, I like him a lot in tournaments. Still packs that upside, still with a pretty limited um, – that court there. They did sign Tim Fraser, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but um, Holiday definitely reserved for more GPPs. This is kind of where it gets into my fun range. Brandon Knight, Ricky Rubio, D'Angelo Russell. Two to three I really like in all formats, um, and that being Brandon Knight and Ricky Rubio. Knight coming off a tough uh, matchup against the Jazz, as you expect. Um, before that, was really playing well. 37-41 uh, in two games for minutes. Um, uh, a nice matchup against the Lakers to get back on track tonight. They were in 28th in defensive efficiency. Um, a lot of the second most fantasy points per game to, to opposing point guards this season. So the usual goes. Uh, we're looking at, at another point guard against the Lakers. If you like uh, a nice pivot, D'Angelo Russell on the other side, uh, a nice move for GPPs. There's no way in hell I can trust him in cash games, uh, mainly because Byron Scott is just ridiculous. Um after playing solid minutes of in the 30, 35, 36 minutes over the last what seemed to be two weeks or so, uh, you know, when you locked in that starting role, 25 and 22 were the last two games. Uh, so um, not quite sure what to, what to look for tonight as far as minutes go. So that, that puts him into a, a not a cash game role for me. Um, I'd much rather target Ricky Rubio at a very similar price. 
Um, Rubio's been really solid, averaging 12, 4, and 8 over the last 10 games. 10, 4, and 10 over the last five. Uh, Houston's allowed the 11th most fantasy points per game to opposing uh, point guards this season. They also rank 27th in turnovers. I think you're going to see quite a bit of defensive stats coming from this Minnesota team, which kind of helps their ceiling uh, and their floor as well. So um, three straight double-digit assist games for him. He recorded 12 against Houston last time out. Uh, Rubio's just another solid play for me tonight. Um, definitely worth a look in all formats. If you're looking even cheaper, um, you're likely looking towards guys like Isaiah Kanan, been playing solid, um, averaging 15, 2, and 2 over the last 10 games there, uh, or last five games, sorry. Um, he's a, a cheap value play against OKC, who hasn't been playing great defense. Uh, Brandon Jenks is another one. Um, still 20, 27, 24 minutes. Uh, back-to-back 32 fantasy point games. Definitely a GPP play only just because we can never trust uh, Scott Skiles there. But a uh, guy I'm looking at, Tim Fraser, 14-3-9 uh, and nine in the last game over 26 minutes. No turnovers, which is crucial. Uh, gets a great matchup against Portland. Likely going to be starting at the two. Uh, that, that's the reports there coming out. Um, so I do like him. I think he's a great play, um, great value guy who can just open up a ton with your roster. Um, Portland's allowed the 11th most fantasy points to opposing uh, shooting guards, and they rank 24th in defensive efficiency. Both McCall and Lillard, not great, um, not great uh, defensive guys that that really keep me off of them. So, I'm um, definitely looking his way to to open things up. Looking at shooting guard tonight, uh, obviously James Harden comes in as a top option. Um, hasn't been particularly too great. I mean, averaging 45. DK points over the last five games, which isn't really great if you're paying up for over 10K for a player, but definitely a guy who's always going to be in that high floor range of 45 fantasy points. He's, he has that upside, especially in a matchup like this one, fast-paced, um, tons of upside, great um, great defensive matchups. So um, he's been kind of a little bit poor shooting, 36% from the field, kind of relies on getting to the free throw line a bit. Um, but a 117 Vegas total, I'm definitely going to take some shots with Harden. Not quite sure I'm going to lean with him in cash games. Uh, I think he'd just rather go around and look at some of the other options. I mean, shooting guard is pretty deep tonight, so I'm um, definitely looking at other at other spots to look uh, more so in cash. But guys like Devin Booker, um, Andrew Wiggins, Zach Levine, all kind of sit in the range of right around 6,000 for me, um, and I, I like him a lot. Um, Booker, looking for him to bounce back after two tough games. Uh, guys averaging 21, 2, and 4 over the last 10 games. Also a 26.2% usage rate in that span. As usual, I love anyone squaring off against the Lakers in that backcourt. Uh, and the same goes for Wiggins and Levine. Uh, Wiggins is a shooting guard on DK, uh, small forward on FanDuel. So that's nice on FanDuel, small forward. But um, looking at Wiggins, I mean, Houston, they've allowed the most fantasy points per game to small forwards this season. Ranked 26 defensively. Uh, Wiggins has been very solid, averaging 19, 3, and 2 over the last 10 shooting from a 50% clip from the field. Um, just expect to be right around that 30-point upside. Uh, if you can add some peripheral stats, that would be nice. Zach Levine, he's the other guy, uh, easily one of my shoot, favorite shooting guards tonight. Also averaging 19-3-2 over the last um, 10 games. They're shooting 51% from the field, so pretty identical for those two. Um, and about the same price, you're kind of getting a similar production. I like Levine's upside just a little bit more. Um, you're looking at Houston. Um, They've allowed the eighth most fantasy points per game to shooting guards this season. Also ranked 19th in defensive efficiency. Levine locking heavy minutes, 38 minutes per game in the last 10, so I like him a lot. Uh, It makes it pretty simple as shooting guard to just kind of target around those guys. Um, You can also look at Lou Williams as a cheap play. Um, We haven't quite seen the Boston situation pan out with guys like Evan Turner uh, or Bradley yet who have picked up the slide for, for Crowder. Or smart as well. We just haven't seen that. I don't think you're going to see that in a tougher matchup tonight against Toronto. Uh, just kind of off my radar. But if you're looking cheaper or kind of in that same range, uh, Contavious Caldwell Pope um, really saw gets a great matchup. Averaging 15, 3, and 2 over the last 10 games, 37 minutes per game. This guy just logs a ton of minutes. Um, he's kind of bouncing back a little bit, scoring of late, averaging 23 and 2 in the last five games. Great matchup against Sacramento. If you've been around the DFS world for some time, you know to target shooting guards against Sacramento. They rank 29th in defensive efficiency, and they've allowed the second most fantasy points per game. So uh, it's a pretty safe call there. Looking at small forward tonight, uh, I'm not quite intrigued 
with paying up a ton, but I think it's kind of easy to just because of all the value that's around the slate. Um, and I think in cash games, I think it's pretty wise to pay up for LeBron James and just get him in here, lock him in. You just lock in that 45 plus fantasy point floor. Great matchup against Orlando. Evan Fournier, come on. So uh, you're looking at Kevin Durant. He's a little bit more expensive, just as solid as a matchup against Philly. Um, I think is is it's a little capped with the upside or with the uh, blowout potential there. So that's definitely concerning. But James, I'll just pay down. I think Orlando's more capable of keeping that game close. Um, James is just well rested, coming off a day uh, a game where he sat out against Dallas. So um, I'm looking for James and cash. I think you can go lower in, in GPPs and kind of hope and hit that upside. Uh, just because I don't see the 60 plus from James and Durant tonight, although it is possible as any night. Looking at other options, uh, Chandler Parsons comes in. Uh, a nice high-scoring game to target. If you're banked on Dallas to keep this one close, obviously Parsons is probably going to be a big factor in that. Um, been playing well of late. I mean, averaging 15, 6, and 5, kind of doing it across the board, which has been nice. Also 1.6 deals per game. He's another guy logging heavy minutes, over 35 in that span, uh, shooting the ball well. Um, gets a match against the Warriors. Going to not draw some Iguodala, which is nice. Um, given he's out. So I'm kind of looking at Parsons to be the score to kind of keep this thing close. Him and, and um, Dirk there to to really force Golden State starters to actually play, you know, into the fourth quarter. So uh, give him a look. Outside of that, I mean, you're looking at Tobias Harris uh, on DK as a small forward. Cruising in Detroit, averaging 16-6-2 averaging over the last 10 games. Sacramento, he's playing the power forward. Uh, Sacramento ranks 28th in defensive efficiency against power forwards. Also have the third most fantasy points per game. So Harris, solid play in all formats. I just think at that price tag, I love his upside even in tonight's matchup. I mean, a big 112 Vegas total for those starters in the Pistons and, and how they run a, a ton of minutes. Uh, I like it a lot. Looking a little bit cheaper, Trevor Ariza. Usually not a cash game guy, but for me tonight he is. Um, Minnesota ranks 24th in defensive efficiency. Also allowed the 11th most fantasy points per game. Um, I like the matchup too much. I like that he can contribute on the defensive end as well. Um, averaging 12-4-3 over the last 10 games doesn't look that great on paper. Still kind of average. Uh, but 2.8 blocks plus steals per game, I really like that a lot. Uh, Minnesota ranks in the bottom 10 in turnovers, so Ariza should just kind of be able to generate his usual defensive stats to kind of go with go with uh, a nice line like that, 12-4-3. So I expect him right around that 30 uh, fantasy point range tonight, and he also does have upside given the total and and uh, the game in, in general. Looking at cheaper guys, you're, you're kind of getting into GPP territory now. Um, the always fun PJ Tucker, who when you don't roster him, goes off for 50. When you do, goes off for nine. So uh, definitely GPP guy. Um, definitely has the matchup to pull it off tonight. You're looking at the Lakers. Uh, they've all the second most point, fantasy points per game to opposing small forwards. Also ranked dead last in defensive efficiency. The floor is is still way too low. Even if, he could be going up against another, you know, uh, a D league team, and I still wouldn't roster Tucker and Cash. I mean, he's just completely unreliable. Same with Michael Beasley, another GPP target target from that big Minnesota Houston total. Um, Twenty five plus fantasy points in three of the last four games there. GPP punt play, uh, Minnesota ranks 24th against opposing small forwards. Um, it's just a team total to target. I, I do like Beasley in tournaments. Uh, he's coming off the bench, played the four a little bit, and, and done pretty well. So uh, definitely got to keep an eye on, once again, not in cash games. We're going to power forward tonight. Love Anthony Davis, love Draymond Green. Both of them pretty equal. I like taking the savings with Green. Um I mean, Green, you're looking at a, a great matchup against Dallas. They rank 19th in defensive efficiency. Right around the middle of the league in fantasy points slot per game. Big 117 told to target. I like Green. I think he's going to be a part of that. Dallas, not a great rebounding team. They're ranking the bottom bottom 10 there. So um, Green's a pretty attractive play. And same with Davis. Um, Portland's a lot of the 10th most fantasy points per game to opposing power forwards. Aldridge was on a roll last night before that game really got out of hand. Um I mean, Davis has averaged 27 and 10 with 4.3 blocks for steals per game in three meetings against Portland this season. So uh, I expect him to dominate down low. Looking at other options, uh, there's a couple guys like Gorgi Dang. Uh, great play in all formats for me. Really bounce back. Um, 30 
30 plus fantasy points in four of the last five games. His one down game came against San Antonio, as expected. Uh, Houston ranks 23rd in rebounding. They rank 29th in defensive efficiency against um, power forwards. I like I like that a lot. Um, I think that's just a great play for the price. Uh, great cash game play. A lot of upside in that matchup. Pretty safe for me. Looking cheaper, uh, Sergi Ibaka. He's a guy who's averaging just 12 and 10 over the last 10 games, which is a block per game. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, we're looking looking his way more so in tournaments. Um, they rank 27th in defensive efficiency. Um, obviously, this is a matchup to, to target in tournaments. Hoping for that upside. Hope it stays close. The good thing about Ibaka is, say Durant and Westbrook kind of put up 45 to 50, which is okay at their price. If I'm getting 30 to 35 and three quarters from Ibaka at that price, I like it a lot. So that's one of the difference is from, from paying down a little bit in this game and still getting exposure, which there's another guy we'll talk about in a minute that can do the exact same thing. So uh, solid matchup. As I mentioned, Philly ranks 27 defensive efficiency, dead last in rebounding. So Ibaka is worth a look there. As far as centers go tonight, uh, it's – it's a night I'm looking to really pay down. Um, you're looking at Cousins and Drummond squaring off against each other, Howard and Towns squaring off each, against each other. Not quite sure the price tags are going to be worth it for these guys. I think Towns is probably the one I have the most faith in if he could stay out of foul trouble and, and produce uh, Howard. Coming off that down game against the Clippers, that was absolutely brutal. And there's just a lot of options cheaper. I'm looking at Ennis Cantor. I really think he's safe enough for cash right now on DK. Um Averaging 17-11 over the last five games. He's around 22 minutes per game. Shooting 60% from the field in that span. They rank 30th in rebounding. They've lost the most fantasy points per game. It's just another game we saw him dominate against Portland. Saw him dominate against Boston. Another great matchup for Cantor to really take advantage of. And it's starting to get a little bit too consistent so that I might lean his way in cash. Um, especially if Bayumbo does um, head back to the bench if Falachunas goes. But... Bionbo coming off a monster game um, against Indiana, going to draw a much more favorable matchup. Drew a 50-point burger fantasy point night the other uh, last night there. So Boston, 20th in rebounding. They have the eighth most fantasy points per game to opposing um, centers this season. Bionbo, not a big score, but rebounds and blocks, that's what he does, um, and I, I like him a lot. So uh, I'm likely going to be paying down at center tonight just because I don't think those top options are going to be worth it. Another guy to keep an eye on uh, that I think is going to be off the radar is Mason Plumlee. Um, I'm not really intrigued with the top options, so I'm paying down, and, and Plumlee's the guy who's kind of caught my eye for that price tag. Uh, sure, averaging 9, 8, and 2 over the last five games doesn't seem particularly great, but is generating nearly 25 fantasy points per game in that span. New Orleans ranks 26th in defensive efficiency against centers this year, while the second most fantasy points per game. Pumley's averaged 10, 10, and 4 against them in, in two games this year. So um, I just think his at, at that price tag, it's a pretty attractive option given there's not a lot I want to pay up for tonight. So um, definitely looking that way, and I think the mints are going to be safe. You're likely going to see him in that 28 range, especially with Leonard out. That's another big body that, that can't come in and suck up some more minutes. So uh, give him a look. That's going to wrap things up here with the Mints to win it. Check out dailyfantasycafe.com for all our great tools and content.